as, as Phil said, you know, I've, I've spoken to hundreds of people at the time. I've sung in front of hundreds of people at a time. But that's knowing exactly what you're doing in a particular order. Here we have words written out on, on a piece of paper. So I try to follow the order. But you know, what came to me earlier on was that we can all pray to God. We can pray silently, we can pray out loud. And when we pray to God, He is the ultimate. He's not just somebody that we're just talking to. He is the greatest thing ever. Mm. And if you're in front of an audience of 10,000 people, He's greater than that. Yeah. So why do you have to be fearful? <laughs> Thank you. So I'll put my trust in the Lord. Amen. Yes. Hopefully I'll be able to read it, right? <laughs> the subject today is, does God exist? Well, I could just say yes, <laughs> and leave it at that. Guess what? I'm not going to. <laughs> According to Strong's Concordance, God is mentioned 4,473 times in the Bible. Give or take a few, depending on the Bible. Pretty strong evidence, wouldn't you say? Well, yes and no. If I were to produce a book of dinosaurs and say to you, and this is based on fact, apparently, because I suppose of you have written it, <laughs> it states that a galactic, intergalactic traveller came to Earth, saw the dinosaurs, didn't like them, and killed them all. And I mentioned this fact thousands of times. Would you take it on face value and say it's true? Or would you challenge it? Would you look at it? Would you read everything about it? Would you question it? Would you ask your friends? Would you pray about it? Mm -hmm. Of course you would. You'd never take it on face value. It's silly. So the question remains, does God exist? To those who already know him, yes, absolutely he does exist. To those who do not know him, he is still yet to be discovered. I personally believe God exists and I put my trust in him. However, there are many who believe God does not exist. Sorry, there are many who believe God exists, but likewise there are many who believe God does not exist. It is one of those questions which, well, it's, it's, let's face it, it's caused a lot of debate, a lot of hurt, a lot of anger, a lot of pain, and even wars. Throughout history, ever since the beginning of religion, and has been going on in discussion time after time. Time. There's a good place to start. I read an explanation of the existence of God which simply says if you see a watch, there is a watchmaker. Simple. Yeah? Watch, watchmaker, car, car maker, and so on and so on. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. If you see an egg, egg maker, <coughs> chicken, you know, and all that stuff. So hang on a minute. No egg, no chicken. No chicken, no egg. Catch 22. My personal response to the question to which came first is God. Yeah. Because without God, you cannot have either. Yeah. It stands to reason that for everything that exists, there is a creator. There is an explanation uh, of my understanding, one of which Darwinism, science and evolution cannot explain, as you first must have one or the other. To have something, you must first have something to have it from. So. Take a simple, ordinary, everyday sandwich. You must first have the bread and some sort of filling to make a sandwich. But before that, you have to have something to make the bread with. Mm -hmm. And so on. 
and it goes on and on backwards in time to the beginning until there's nowhere else to go. To make bread you need flour, water and salt. Well, it's gluten free. <laughs> so, great, problem solved. The, you know, we've all got that here on earth. It's here. We've got flour, we've got water, we've got salt. So, yeah, all right, problem solved. No. Where did the flour come from? Where did the water come from? Where did the salt come from? We cannot say it has always been there. That would be ludicrous. They all come from somewhere. If a scientist believe that the universe came from the Big Bang, then where did the components for this Big Bang come from? And who or what lit the touch paper? <laughs> it's a bit of a, almost yeah. a eureka moment because you have to realise that yeah. you cannot have one without the other. Yes. The only thing that can be without anything else being but there before is God. Mm -hmm. Because God always was. Okay. Now, scientists and unbelievers look at the Godhead and dismiss it as ridiculous. Three in one person. Schizophrenia. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's have a look at this. Are there any mechanics here today? No, the no mechanics doesn't really matter because most of us would have heard the three in one word, would we not? Mm. It does in the physical pretty much that which the Godhead does in the spiritual. Our Father in heaven, he comes before us. And like the, the three in one oil, the oil that we use quite readily these days is made mm. up of three things that cleans, lubricates, penetrates deep to get away all the things that you apply it to that you need to get rid of. And the same is with God. God looks at us and he says, hang on, you're not quite perfect. So we come before him and our God does the same. He cleans us of our sin. He lubricates and penetrates deep inside us. He then protects us. These are the three things that an ordinary everyday substance that people take for granted and believe in, God does that in the spiritual. Yes. I think everybody here knows there is no physical way to prove the existence of God. Let me pose a question to you. How can we prove our love for one another? Can I take my love out of my body, hold it in my hand and show it to you? Physically, show it to you. No, of course I can't. Yeah, I know it's there, and my wife Susan knows it's there. She doesn't have to see it. She knows it. But when you read the Bible, you will find that around 52 verses relating to seek and ye shall find. Matthew 7.7 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For whoever asks receives. The one who seeks will find, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. It in itself is just words. But if you look deeper into that verse, it is a command to look deeper and to question things in the Bible. The Bible teaches us, 1 Timothy 5.21, but test all things carefully. Hold firmly to that which is good. We all need to understand that there is a God who loves us. And he wants us to search for him. And we can come to know him personally. I know I love God. And I know he loves me. 
I was skeptical. I presume most of us here were skeptical at one stage. I was skeptical to the existence of God, and so blessed would say to me, you have to ask God to reveal himself to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, there I was, sitting in church one Sunday. Sue was off in the crash doing the stuff, looking off for all the kids. And I'm sitting there, the minister's talking about something, and I found myself asking God to reveal himself to me as there was a brick wall, literally a brick wall around my heart. The minister immediately stopped what he was talking about. He said, there's somebody out there with a brick wall around their heart. Hmm. Okay, I thought. <laughs> Ask, Susan says. So I thought, okay, okay. If you want me to know you, I need to break down this wall. The minister immediately said, that wall has to be broken down. Whoever you are is going to be broken down. That would be okay, I thought. No, no, no. It's a coincidence. So I thought, ask again. So I asked God to reveal his face to me as I couldn't see him. And I know now, now, that you can't see God's face. But immediately the band had struck, broken out in, in song, singing about seeing God's face. Mm. I give in. I gave my life to the Lord there and then. I had asked, I had tested, and he had revealed to, to me in a way that I could only understand was from him. It wasn't coincidence, it was the Lord. I went to the front and cried on the minister's shoulder. Unbeknownst to me, someone had rushed out to get slipped from the crash. And then she came in there, I was blubbering on the minister's shoulder, having given my life to the Lord. I was saying something to the minister and I was talking in English. He said to me, a little while after, he said, that's the first time anybody's given their life to the Lord and spoken tongues. I don't know what I was saying. I have no idea what I was saying. I thought I was talking in English and talking about Well, he said that was tongues. He was hearing something completely different to what I thought he was saying. I was overwhelmed with God's love and his presence. This is how I know God exists. I asked God, I sought God, I knocked and I found him. Mm -hmm. He was just behind the door. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of us here, or those hopefully watching online, etc. When you gave your, your life to the Lord, you had an amazing experience or a feeling come over you. I know I did. And that was God touching me. Last Sunday, Peter said in a sermon, he was in a very deep, dark place when he felt the hand of God on his shoulder. And later, God or an angel's hand brushed his face. Well, I thank you, Peter, for, for confirming to me that we cannot touch God. But God can touch us. Amen. He touches us. He holds us in His hands. I can't physically prove that God exists. No one can prove it. We know it. We believe it. It is by faith we accept it. To atheists, God does not exist. But to a believer, He does. To us, it is a belief that God exists, and there is nothing that I or anybody else can do to prove or disprove it. I believe. Do you? Yes. If not, take a chance on God and ask Him to reveal Himself to you personally. If you seek Him, you will find Him. Because he loves you. Thank you.